So in this video, what I want to show is how to calibrate a load ring. And what a load ring is, is something like what you're seeing right here. It is a ring that has a dial in it. And what this really does is as you hook up weights or loads to the bottom or the to the top of this, uh, it'll measure the displacement of this little rod moving up and down. And later what you'll do is transform the displacement recorded with the dial uh, and transform it into a load. Every tick mark on the load ring uh, has a particular measurement. So from one load ring to another load ring, you may be uh, measuring various different quantities. So for example, this load ring, every single tick mark uh, is measuring 0 0.0001 inches. I'll try to show this to you. So that 0 0.0001 inches is what you'll be measuring as the tick will go from, for example, five to the next tick mark. So what we want to do is calibrate two load rings today, one for our triaxial machine that you'll be testing in one of the experiments, and then another load ring, which is for the direct shear device, which is another test. This one is actually for your direct shear test, and this one hooked up here is for your triaxial machine. Uh, these look the same, although if you look carefully, they do look a little bit different. So this one only has one ring, this one has two rings around it. Right. So the calibration factors that we're trying to obtain today will be uh, a constant having a particular unit that if you multiply into displacements that you later on record will eventually give you load in units of load. Okay? So what we want to get today is that constant coefficient that you'll multiply later on. Now in order to do that, um, what we'll need to do is to hook up uh, some loads that we already know how much they weigh, right? So for example, I've measured the weight of this uh, weight and it's about four kilograms, right? So I'll add this load and I'll measure the displacement that the load ring is giving me. Uh, once I go up to a certain value of uh, load or weights, so for example, I'll add, keep adding a couple of these loads that I just showed. Uh, and as I'm recording the displacement, then I'll start removing the loads and then recording the displacements one more time. So basically a load, unload kind of a uh, direction. Then once we have all that, we'll put it together and plot uh, on the y-axis uh, the displacements that you recorded and on the x-axis the weight of the weights you can actually transfer the weights into units of newton right so these will be in kilograms you can transform them into newtons or kilonewtons which will later on help you um, in the experiments to get units of pressure in kilopascals or kilonewtons over meter squared uh, where you'll be using to interpret your results. Okay, so the first weight that I'm gonna hang is actually this hanger that's gonna uh, keep those weights from not falling down. This itself has about 500 grams of weight, okay? So what I'd like to show before any of this is the actual dial and what it's measuring. So the dial um, is consisted of two measurements, right? So one will be this little dial and then the other one being this larger dial. So in the little dial basically will be the first number that you read and the second number that you read will be this larger number uh, right here on the larger dial, right? So if you actually look closely uh, the 
number in the little dial is something in between 5 and 6, right? It's above uh, 5, so it's going into the 6. And then the number on the large dial right here is something after the 5. It's actually midway between 5 and 6, right? So the large dial goes from 0 all the way to 100, right? So 10 ticks between 0 and 1. That makes it 100 ticks from 0 uh, to 0, doing uh, 360 degrees, one full round, right? And then the little dial goes from uh, 0 to 0 again, but you don't have any other subdivisions there, OK? So if I were to read this, the uh, ultimate value would be first the little dial, which is 6, then this one which is 54, right? So the overall rating will be 654. Now, as you can see, if I start adding this hanger that I was talking about, right, the load or the displacement dial will be going will be moving, right? So it was 654. And now as I release the hanger, it's now 651, let's just call it, right? So now the next step will be to add a, a heavier load. So I'm going to be adding this 4 kilograms of load to the hanger. And as you'll see, on the dial, the dial being at 651, will have a substantial amount of movement now, right? So now we are roughly at about 600 and we'll have to wait for it to stabilize a little. 625 is what I would read off of this. Now remember, uh, we are adding loads, but since it's adding tensile um, uh, force to the um, dial, the numbers are actually going down, right? So it was 654 at the beginning, then I added a load, it went to 651, and then after adding the four kilos, uh, I am now at 625. Let's see what adding another four kilograms will lead us to. So now the total weight that we have is eight kilos. Uh, well, considering this, we'll be at eight and a half kilograms. But our reading is now uh, a little bit uh, less than 600, right? So what I read right now is 597. Right, so 597 is our next reading. So the next load that I want to add is another four kilos, right? So a total of 12 kilograms of load, and we were at 597. This time, the dial is now at, I'm waiting for it to stabilize, the dial is at 570. So that's 570, and we have 12 kilos. I'll add another 4 kilograms. And this time, we are at 541. So that's the reading. The next load that I'll be adding is a little bit more than what I've added so far. So. This time I'm going to add a, another heavier weight, which is about 16 kilos. And I'm going to ask my uh, assistant to help me with this. So so we have a total of 32 kilograms on here. And our reading now is substantially changed, right? So our reading is now 435. So 
So that's the next reading. We have one more to go. So here's the next one. There we go. This one's the most critical one. So we have a total of 16 kilos and 16 and 16, so 48 kilos. And our dial is now reading 332. So 332 is the last load uh, or the last uh, dial reading that we measured, okay? So now that we added all the loads, I'm gonna remove all the loads and do the readings one more time. So, by taking it off, I am now at 431. I'll take this one off too. And the reading is 535. As you can see, the readings while loading and unloading are slightly different. And that's why we're doing it both ways. So I keep removing the loads here. One by one. And the reading is 564. I'll remove the next one, and I'm at 592. Take one more off, and I'm back in the 600s. I'm at 619. And the final load to be taken off, I take it off, and I'm at 647, okay? So I started off at 651 with the hanger on, and now by loading and unloading, I am at 647. So this was the process to calibrate the triaxial load ring. Um, and I can actually provide you the serial number of this. So the serial number for this um, load ring is 4853. And uh, the collected data will be presented to you so you can work on it and uh, actually find that calibration factor that you'll later on need to use for the tri triaxial test. I'll also give you a, another set of data for calibrating the direct shear load ring, which I showed you earlier. So this is the direct shear load ring. As I mentioned, it has one ring instead of two, which the triaxial had. So the serial number on the um, direct shear load ring is 10160. I'll provide you a similar set of data so you can also find a calibration factor for that also. Now remember, the calibration factors for the two load rings will be different, right? So you'll need to process the data two times and use uh, the corresponding calibration factor uh, when uh, you're doing each test, okay?